Choosing the right thermal cutting process is crucial for maximizing efficiency, quality, and cost effectiveness in metal fabrication. In today's session, you will gain valuable insights into the strengths and applications of oxyfuel, plasma, and laser cutting technologies. This technical workshop brings together cutting edge insights on selecting the most effective thermal cutting technologies and how to align your processes with the right machinery for maximum efficiency and productivity. We have two distinguished speakers joining us today. Mr. Durai Swami Ravichandran is the DGM Application Engineering and Intelligence Solutions at Mesa Cutting Systems India. And for the very first time, we are pleased to join by Mr. Vishal Devore, Director at Kilbag India. Our first speaker is Mr. Durai Swami Ravichandran, a seasoned professional in Application Engineering and Intelligent Cutting Solutions. So today he will be sharing valuable insights on thermal cutting processes and how to choose the right method for specific needs. So MESA is a company founded in 1898 and uh, it's spread across the globe and uh, it's a global company and has vast experience in thermal cutting industry. And uh, we have got plants at five locations where development, uh, research, and production of all the uh, cutting machines are being done. And from these five plants, we cater to the whole of globe. That is, each uh, plant takes care of a part of the globe. Thermal cutting is a part of the uh, cutting process. Like we have generally two types of cutting process. One is the contact cutting, and the other one is the non-contact cutting. So contact cutting is like any of the uh, lathe, the milling machines and the machine centers where you have a physical uh, contact of the cutting tool with the uh, uh, material what we want to cut. So our process is not included in this. Ours is a non-contact cutting and we use thermal energy to do the cutting. So we have three types of uh, technology to do the uh, non-contact cutting. One is the oxyfuel, we call it flame cutting. The other one is the plasma cutting. And the third one is the laser cutting. Like oxyfuel is using a fuel gas with oxygen mixture and plasma is using electric arc and then laser is using the light. So the process is like oxyfuel, you can go up to 300 mm, whereas with plasma, you can go up to typically up to 120 or so. But medium, like you can go up to 58 to 80 mm uh, based on the uh, power of the uh, plasma source. And laser is maximum, they tend to, on a production line, they tend to use it up to 30 mm. So if you have, want to cut a high thick plate, it's a very thick plate, you can go up to say around 300 mm or 200 mm. Obviously, is the best process. But when you want, a better precision and thickness is only up to one, 120 then plasma is the right process and if thickness is less and the friction is still uh, fine then laser is the process so in comparison to thickness versus precision this is the uh, bubble diagram which can explain the capability of the three process and but with the higher laser is slightly expanding in terms of capability because of uh, the uh, laser high power lasers are coming up and a uh, lot of development is happening in, happening in that field so advantages of plasma with respect to oxyfil is better you have a better finish quality of cut is much much better productivity is higher in plasma and cost also is relatively lower and advantages, it has a lower capital uh, investment. Whereas uh, in laser, you have a higher capital investment, but the running cost is less. This graph, like, or this uh, uh, indicator is the best indicator to select what, what process you want when you want to cut mild steel. But when you want to cut stainless steel, the choice is between laser and plasma. So capability is more in plasma, but when you have a tighter tolerance and a lower thickness, laser is the preferred solution. It is to choose between which cutting process. I'm not putting the uh, 
oxyfuel because that's only meant for higher thickness cutting. Uh, so now moving on to our next expert, uh, uh, we are pleased to welcome Mr. Vishal uh, Devre, who is the director at uh, Kilberg India. He will be speaking on how to choose the right technology for metal fabrication. And definitely he's going to talk more on plasma side. Over to you, Mr. Vishal. As I'm representing Kelberg Plasma, okay. So I am pleased to offer you just our legacy scene, plasma technology, German engineering behind it, all these things. Kelberg is, let's say, also presented worldwide like a MESA. So our also legacy start from 1922. Okay, 1959, we said the birth of a plasma cutting technology. 1970s, we started the first air plasma as an economical option for plasma cutting. Then 1980s, underwater plasma cutting machines. And so on, we can see the charts or let's say timeline. Okay, where you can see different different cutting technologies, what we offer. As you know, the German engineering is famous for the very niche product and especially for the R&D and all these things. So Kelberg is a foundation company and we have really uh, good in our research and development. We have own company called Oscar PLT, who's doing a lot of uh, R&D, all these things. Adhya. So the, as Mr. Ravichandran marked that, up to 160 millimeter metal can be processed with the plasma technology. All the electrical conductive material can be processed and can be used for the mechanical engineering, shipbuilding, steel services, plate, plant, or job shops, everywhere is possible. So going ahead with that, so this is a latest, let's say, machine for the latest generation. What we have at the Q series, these machines are available in the modular structure up to 120 millimeter steels we can process. It's called stainless steel or let's say a mild steel can be processed. And as we say in the smart factory solutions and let's say this is about industry 4.0, all the remote e-service, remote monitoring, everything is possible in these machines. But the unique feature about this machine is that these machines are modular. So customer can buy, for example, the machine with the let's say lesser capacity and in the future if you want to extend the capacity for example you have to cut the higher thicknesses then you can just insert one module and the machine become a 300 ampere machine as we are moving ahead all these things industry is growing up so the, all our machine even this uh, smallest machine what we have with k200 also having a mobile app connect so just download the app from the play store and you can connect the machine interact with the machine machine can give a lot of the data and that data you can use full for your smart factory automations your purchase requirement, inventory control. So a lot of possibilities are there. For audience is uh, not aware that plasma also can cut non-conductive, let's say, parts. For example, mainly this hot wire technology is a patented technology from the Kelbuck side. Can cut non-conductive combined interrupted work pieces such as mostly the grating, hollow sections, armored concretes. Hot wire is, it's like an indirect plasma cutting, okay. And this can use a plasma arc between the cathode and the auxiliary wire feeder space. We are cutting the grating, all these things with this application. This is also a unique uh, process, you can say. And you can cut with the plasma, the grating with very higher speeds. Going ahead. Plasma marking, a lot of people have heard about it. Plasma marking, all these things. All the high precision plasmas are managed due to the marking. The plasma marking is uh, like a, a branding uh, something on electrically conductive materials on your plates. So many customers nowadays using a very expensive laser cutting systems, although the requirement applications can be fulfilled with the plasma cutting machines. Why? So investing in any CNC cutting machines require really careful consideration. Is a laser or a plasma is a better solution for the needs? A smarter long investment has to check. The strong competition between the plasma and the laser these days is mainly because of fire laser has improved in terms of a technology cost effectiveness in just last few years. Therefore, many a classic plasma users wondering whether the fiber laser could be the alternative for the cutting task or not. But I can say here, each process has its merits and technological advantage depending on the field of applications. So I just like to quickly brief out the five reasons why plasma and where you can consider it. First, the material thickness and the requirement. The material thickness and requirement, we can see the laser is typically right now is much more popular for the thinner sheet place, 0.5 to 15, 20 millimeter maximum. But the plasma has a wide range up to 5 millimeter to 160 millimeters. The material requirement itself of the plasma, it's, it's like uh, any mild steel cutting, anything's okay. No special requirement is there. Okay, the oil plate can be the oily, greasy, rusty, can be processed. Where the laser 
you might require a little bit higher requirements of material. Okay, so this has to take care. And typically, this uh, cutting of metal which highly reflect your say, surface reflective, like aluminum, copper, sometimes it could be critical. So this is a chart you can see here. So typically, up to 12 kilowatt, like a high power lasers, they can go up to 60 sometimes, when practically 20, 30 millimeters they can do. But plasma can do up to 160 in a good way. Comparison between the fiber laser with 6 kilowatt, 8 kilowatts, 12, and the typically 300 and 400 ampere plasma cutting system. With increasing sheet thickness, the cutting speed of a laser decreases at disproportionate rate. Whereas for the material thickness, 12, 15, 20, even, and higher, the plasma have a lot of advantages, all these things, and it's consistently given up advantages. Above 50 millimeter, it can be said that technologies are getting together. On the other hand, thin metal sheets, the highest precision, fastest possibilities. When you have an integrate counter, small geometric, among all these things, and the laser is quite good. Surface quality is getting worse when the increase of material thicknesses and surface roughness is also the problem. Fourth point, we can take care of the safety and the handling is the most important, I can say. The plasma required a minimum safety requirement, easy to learn, easy to use, flexible, simple, loading, unloading person. You can simple fork trip train, trains manually. You can do the loading, unloading of plate. You can do the multiple torch application, all these things, especially about bevel cutting applications. You can do N kind of a Y, K, X bevel very easily. Whereas in the laser, you can see the safety is required. Okay. The maintenance is sometimes it's also difficult. Loading, unloading plate, you require a big shuttle table systems. And due to the physical reason with all the big laser, all these things, you require a special kind of application. Beveling is difficult. So if it connect us, uh, this is our global presence. I handle the Indian subcontinent and the Middle East countries. So you can connect us directly here. Follow us on social media channels all here and they can help you out. And our partner, Mr. Cutting System, will also help you out on the back. So as we come to the end of today's workshop, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to our ex expert speakers of today, Mr. Duray Swamira Vichandran and Mr. Vishal Devode for their valuable time and insight. Thank you so much, both of you. And a big thank you to our sponsors, Mr. Cutting Systems India and Kelberg Finster Valde for making this event possible. We hope today's session helps you make smarter, more informed decisions when it comes to thermal cutting technologies. So stay safe, stay innovative, and we look forward to seeing you at our future events. Thank you so much and have a great evening.